All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golem from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM from beautiful, sunny, blue-skied San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Angela Henderson, who is in Brisbane, Australia. A little early in the morning there, Angela, yeah? Yeah, yeah, a little early, 7.30, but I've got two kids, so early is never uh, early, it feels. Yeah, yeah, so yes, early. I'm ready to rock and roll. Yeah, early's relative, yeah. And, you know, Angela's a, a, business, coach, a, a business coach, and you prefer to be called Ange or Angela? And just fine. Yeah, I'm pretty laid back. Whatever, whatever yeah. floats your boat, John. <laughs> yeah, a business coach for women. Um, and she also, I love this, you've got an online baby shop as well. Yeah, yeah so we wrapped that up. So we, oh, I had that for a decade and we wrapped that right. up at kind of in the last six to eight months. But yes, yeah, so I've yeah. had an e-com platform with about 1400 products and then moved into consulting about three and a half years ago. Yeah, excellent. And today what we're going to talk about is human to human marketing, but particularly as it pertains to sales, because uh, as we know that uh, as sales have evolved over you know a number of years, the ability for sales to be able to micro market or to market, not just to, you know, once upon a time, salespeople like would have uh, just sh shivered or shuddered at the thought of marketing but now it's become part of what they have to do because of all the networking etc so when you talk about human to human marketing what do you mean Ange? well human to human marketing is the experience and interaction one faces with a particular brand obviously a lot of times in this particular space we hear a lot about b2b and b2c mm -hmm. and i think there's yeah. still relevance with both of those but i do believe that people need to start thinking about if they are those you know cohorts how do you infuse uh human to human or some people will call it people to people depending on where mm -hmm. you are in the world and that interaction and experience because without that i think you're going to get really left behind in today's current climate people really want to know that they're not just being treated like a transaction that they are actually you know when i always giggle like you know studies most recent studies show john that your customers are human right and oh. people forget that this mm -hmm. is the case right like mm -hmm. they just are like next transaction next transaction and i get when we're in the infancy stage and startup stages that sure. we are just trying to stay afloat but the sooner organizations can start to understand the essence of treating people like humans and to infusing that experience and interaction, you're going to be able to disrupt everyone else. Yeah, and it's funny, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of ironic, the fact that uh, treating people like they're people and that the fact that you're <laughs> selling and, and marketing to people can differentiate you. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's quite it's quite wrong. But I also think, uh, and uh, if you think about during this this period right now, of what we're in is... I think I think this had started pre anyway pre pre the pandemic is that people were craving more and more some kind of human relationship some kind of human interaction and I think that's been multiplied by a thousand now because of the situation we've been through so I think it stands to to reason that people should really start considering that and salespeople particularly should start considering how much the relationship part matter still matters and maybe matters more than ever. I do agree with that. And I also think if you look at a traditional sales process, for example, mm -hmm. you've got the prospect, you qualify, you present, you overcome objections, you close, you follow up, and maybe you provide some customer service. And I don't know if you've ever read the book, The Go-Giver by, um, I'm just trying yeah. to think, yeah. Uh, yeah, Bob Berg and John David Mann, yeah. but they talk about their sales process as it being slightly different. And they talk about create value, touch people's lives, build networks, be real, stay open, and you will become profitable, right? And mm -hmm. so again, though, it's, it can feel very counterintuitive because everyone's telling us we must do it the old traditional sales way. But if you start to you some of what they talk about in the Ghost Giver book and about really again that human to human element, mm -hmm. it seems like it's a no brainer. It just feels very uncomfortable, I guess, because it's the, pretty much the opposite of what we've all been taught. Yeah, no, it is. And it's interesting. Yeah, we've had Bob Berg um, speak at one of our events and, uh, and also the uh, name escapes me now, the guy who used to uh, have the Go Giver franchise down there in Australia. Oh, um, gosh, I'm not too sure about that. But yes, nope. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, so, I love so we're Bob very. Berg. Yeah, so we're very familiar with that. And, uh, but yeah, to, but to your point, I think now is the time to get a little uncomfortable and a bit more, a little bit counterintuitive coming out of this, because I do think it's, you know, there's, there's somewhat of a reset uh, uh, going on. And I think coming out of, and as I said, coming out of this, I think people are going, are going to be a little bit more open and a little bit more sensitive at the same time. 
Mm -hmm. I totally agree. And I think it's also a wonderful opportunity from a sales point is that so often we're told that we must sell high ticket items all the mm -hmm. time. And I'm not disputing that there's a place for high ticket items. I too have them, my one-to-one -one coaching, my masterminds. Mm -hmm. But there comes also, I think for me personally, was this uh, has allowed me to look at what other lower ticket items could I potentially be offering to get more people, not only to be able to help them during the current climate, but equally to get them into my ecosystem. Because when you take anyone, right, from a cold client, then obviously a warm client, and then they're buying from you, even if it's a $7 offer, even if it's a $20 offer or a $500 offer, they still are going to take notice. There's, you're still mm -hmm. helping them, but equally they're going to take more notice of you. Whereas freebies i think there's a space for freebies from an organic growth plate but people also remember i don't know about you but if i download a freebie it goes into my resource file and i draw on it when i need it it's not necessarily yes. something that i'm opening and consuming right away so i think uh, for me personally COVID has given me that opportunity to really reflect reflect on my offerings and how i can incorporate more people into my ecosystem at a lower cost point yeah, and I think that's a great point. And I think it doesn't matter what, uh, you know, uh, what kind of um, product or service you're offering, because I do think that the idea of, you know, doing maybe, you know, pilots or things like that. And I, and I do agree with you in the fact is, yeah, it should be paid for, uh, because obviously, um, you know, people take it a little bit more seriously, but they also appreciate the fact that, yeah, mm -hmm. they're paying a smaller amount to, to test something out and that's okay. Because like you said, if, if everything is free, then it does just go into your free bucket and you don't pay it as much attention. But I do think it's a great point because I think obviously there's going to be, people are going to be very uh, cost sensitive right now because they're unsure about the future. So any way you can help people still experience what you have, um, but do it in a way that's comfortable enough for them, I think that's a win-win on both sides. But then I also think it's important for people to still give themselves permission to sell, right? Yeah, you know, like I've continued to sell this entire time and I've never been busier. So there are still people who, even though there might be people that only are right now needing that lower ticket item, there are still copious amounts of people that I'm working with myself who are prepared to still pay for that higher ticket item. Yeah. So don't assume that just because we're either, you know, going to hit a recession and we're in this COVID thing, right, that people aren't buying. If you've got something of value to add to people um, and you can showcase that value, they will still purchase from you. Yeah, no, 100%. And in fact, I think that there are, in every downturn or in every crisis, there are people who invest. And there are mm -hmm. people who, who invest and look for opportunities to grow for the future. And, and your product or service may be exactly what they're looking for. And this may be the best time ever to, to sell to those particular people. So, yeah, I think it's always important that people don't um, you know, take a one size fits all approach or to think that, uh, and especially if you're, if you're in sales, not to sort of get, get too down and sort of go, well, nobody's going to buy from me because of this mm -hmm. crisis, you know, maybe your traditional buyer mightn't, but there might be other people that maybe haven't targeted whose, whose industries are actually doing quite well or are preparing for the future. Mm -hmm. I know one of my one-to-one -one clients, she has just had a 300 K month last month. So at time of recording, we're in May. So in April, yeah. it was a 300 K month. It was her biggest month, but she zoned in on a particular product, which was her uh, podcasting, right? How to start right. a podcast. Mm -hmm. People are sitting in their homes, right? Yeah. They're doing our business owners too. going, okay, I've been thinking about this podcast. What mm -hmm. could I do? You know, she's really big in the podcasting space. She launched a $197 product, right? Uh, flip that into 300K. Now, granted, she probably would have spent, I don't, we have the exact figures, but sure. probably give or take half of that in ad spend, right? But still, uh, you know, half of that profitability on an e-product that is going to help yeah. all these people launch their uh, podcasts in a time of need. Like, I mean, that's a pretty good thing. You know, it still shows that there's need out there. No, it absolutely. And like, and like you're saying, it's like, it's being creative and it's finding the right product fit for right now. And, and as I said, it may take, it may take you looking at your traditional customers and going, okay, this is maybe a segment that's probably not going to be spending right now, but here, here's another group that I've never really focused on and they seem to have. So adapting and, and, and I think being agile, I mean, it's all about being agile, isn't it? And also, I think agility also comes from, you know, thinking outside the box. And there's a thing that I've heard about for a long time, but really in the US, LA, um, I never say her last name right, but it's BJ. 
E R K. It sounds like jerk, but it's like it's really weird. But anyways, Allie, phenomenal lady. Um, she uh, has she's kind of coined this term, the Tani offer. It's been around for years, but more so, it's just getting kind of named out in the U.S. around Tani offer. But you take a seven dollar offer. So for example, I've got my seven days Instagram, thirty days of Instagram content. Then when they get to the sales page, there's a bump there. So the bump there is a seven, $17 graphics, Instagram graphics. Because mm -hmm. if you've got the content, you obviously need the yeah. graphics to then mm -hmm. marry it up. And then uh, the OTO, the one-time offer. So instead of it going to a thank you page, it goes to a one-time offer page, where then is sitting my uh, Instagram mastery course for business owners, uh, where it's like eight modules, four, do you know what I mean, freebies. And that's going for 77 so some people, yes, are only buying the $7 because that's all they need mm. now. But I've given them two other options that they potentially can choose throughout that sales process, right? So again, it's about thinking outside the box and how you can string a few products together to complement each other and increase your, uh, your total cost uh, per cart. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's a that's a great point. And I think you can do the same in 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 kind of B2B sales as well. Um, it's it, it just means that you have to maybe look at your product and service set, as you said, and maybe do a little bit of more work on it, maybe packaging, bundling, uh, your know, add ons, all of that kind of thing. I think, though, I think the key is to realize that there are opportunities, as you say, if you're prepared to think outside the box, if you're prepared to look at maybe your audience in a different way. Yes, 100%. There's always opportunity if you choose to look for the opportunity, mm. right? So again, I, I think that comes down to mindset. I, I do see a few people kind of mindset a little bit wobbly, but regardless if we're in a pandemic or not, is every morning we get to wake up and we get to choose what we do or not <laughs> and how we look at the world, right? So if yeah you look for opportunity, you're going to find an opportunity, right? If you choose not to, well, you're probably going to sit there, you know, in your undies yeah. watching Netflix, right? So yeah, let the exactly. choice be yours. <laughs> no, and it's very true. And I mean, because I, I tell you the, I mean, whatever's going to happen is going to happen, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's just the reality of it. And a, and a wise person once um, told myself and my wife is that like, if something is in the future, uh, you have two choices. You can, you can say, oh, it's going to be awful, it's not going to work out. Say you have an appointment next week, oh, yeah, it's not going to, you know, they're really difficult, I don't know what, how it's going to go. So you can spend a week negative, or you can say it's going to be fantastic, and you can spend a week positive. Now, if it turn, even if it turns out bad in the end, hey, you just had a positive week at leading Exactly up. right. It's That's still so much seven better. days of still bringing <laughs> happiness into your world, right? Exactly. Um, and, I and, I think, think, and I think we have to kind of do the same thing right now in some ways. But I also think with sales, right? So for example, mm -hmm. as I threw up one of my seven to 17 to whatever offers yeah. and it didn't work. So then as, a, as someone I go, okay, well, oh, poor me. No, yes, mm -hmm. it still sucked, right? Yeah. But it's about being able to adapt. It's about yeah. testing. And I feel like in our current environment, that's what we, well, I feel like we need to at least be exploring. I hate when people say you must do this. I think people need to explore yeah. is that, you know, adapt, adapt to the current environment, adapt what your business needs to look like, adapt to what your clients need, right? Um, we're here to serve them, not the other way around. So too mm -hmm. often I find businesses are driven by ego. But if you remember that your people are humans, right, and that they need something from you, if you can present that to them, you're going to become profitable. So again, it, it comes down to adapting it, whether or not you've got a launch. And like we open cart for my launch where we would normally have anywhere from a forty to $50,000 like launch in that. We open cart the day pandemic peaked. Wow. Right. So there was thousands of dollars on Facebook ads. We had our email list. Everything was in play. What could I do, John? There's nothing mm -hmm. I could do. Right. Yeah. And I'm also a believer that just because it's a no now doesn't mean it's a no forever. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And so like, again, adapt, like I could have sat there and do you mean wallowed in, do you mean tens of thousands of dollars spent and we didn't do you mean hit our targets, but that was out of my control. A pandemic happened. So yeah. adapt and we move on. Yeah, no, I, I love that because, yeah, because sometimes the timing's just off and it's just nothing you can do about it. And and you just have to regroup. And to your point also, you have to test and figure out you know, whether, you're, whether you're doing the right things. But also, I do think that people remember, uh, as you said, just because it's a no now doesn't mean it's a no in the future. I think people remember the experience that they had, even if they didn't want to buy at the time or if it's mm. something they couldn't buy. They still remember how you made them feel. 100% and there's that quote exactly by, is it Maya Angel 
Angelio yeah. or something, I think, yeah. where she said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget yeah. what you did, but people will never forget the way you made them feel, right? Exactly. And I'm also a really big believer. I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily say I've coined this because I never think you can coin anything, but one of the things that I often talk about is conversations equal connections and connections mm -hmm. equal conversions. So right. again, the more conversations you're having with people, the more connections you are, and inevitably you will have more conversions. But if you don't have conversations, how do you build the connections to equal the conversion? So you always need to be thinking about where can I be selling? How can I sell? How can I build relationships that potentially will lead into others? Like it all is a flow on effect, really. Yeah, no, 100%. And I think part of it is, is basically building on what you're just saying there. It's about, and I don't mean um, activity or getting busy for the sake of it, but it's like mm. doing stuff. It's like stuff. I mean, there's as we all know, there's so much outside of our control that we just, you have to just let that happen. But you got to look at the things that are in your control. As you say, I mean, you can make connections, you can have conversations, you can try different types of, of offers. There's lots of things you can do. Um, mm -hmm. So just, so you shouldn't feel powerless. You just have to let go of those things that you have no power over. Mm -hmm. 100%. Like you can only control what's in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow and what happened yesterday. Control what's in front right. of you today and rock and roll, right? And I also believe that the, I don't be, um, feel that there's mistakes or failures. I look at that. These are the lessons that businesses need and yeah. we need to get to the next step. If you haven't learned that lesson and you keep repeating the quote unquote same mistake over and over, then you haven't learned the lesson to get you to the next step. So really now is also a time to really be reflecting on what's been going on in your business. What's worked? What do you need to let go of? Also, I'm a really big believer about looking at your return on investment. You yes. can't polish um, a turd. Okay. So mm -hmm. if you've got a shitty product, now might be the time that you look at polishing, do you know what I mean? Making something better. All right. Yeah. And making it the diamond. So again, it's prime opportunity to just, do you know what I mean? Really sit and reflect when, um, so often businesses say I'm working in my business. I'm so busy, yeah. blah, blah, blah. When you work in your business, you're working on today's income, but when you work on your business, you're working on tomorrow's income. So again, another opportunity to really be looking at both your short-term and long-term growth strategy. Yeah, I know. I couldn't agree more. And I think that's a, so again, so maybe, as you said, so maybe business is slow right now. But again, you said you could work on improving your businesses, improving your product, improving your service, figuring out what are the things and, you know, doing some analysis on it. There's lots you can do to make this time productive rather than destructive, right? Mm -hmm. Well, for example, I had two clients who've been wanting to start a podcast, right? But they, they were going through a rapid growth stage. And obviously that growth stage, because it was contingent on um, certain buyers, right? Obviously, some of our markets here in Australia got shut down mm -hmm. and it, there's nothing we could do. So I was like, mm -hmm. all right, there's no excuses. I want the podcast. Give me titles to me. I want the graphics to me. I want this. And I said, I want a launch date. And so they're due what day is today. June 10th is the first one. And I think the 12th is the second. They'll launch the podcast, right? So it's like, there are these, I'm like, don't sit and swallow. Like when I say don't sit in the grief, what I want to say is mm. every business will be going through grief sure. differently right now. And so I'm not saying that it's not important to do you know I mean, acknowledge those businesses who have completely closed down. So I don't mm -hmm. want people to feel like I'm being disrespectful, but go through your grief, watch Netflix, do what you need to do. But then do you know I mean, go, what do I need to do now? You know, because yeah. I do, there was an article I read by a psychologist talking about, she believes everyone in the world will have gone through some level of trauma based on the yeah. current environment, whether Absolutely. or not it's a direct impact or um, an in, uh, indirect impact. And she said it will look very different because based on pe how people were raised, but it's important to understand that pretty much everyone will have gone through some level of loss over the last little while. And where there's loss, there is grief. So please sit in that. But then also, um, you know, I don't want anyone to then have to go into full depression or, do you know what I mean, things like that yeah. either. So it's yeah. about, you know, sit in it and then go forward. And, you know, that's what I did with these guys. Okay, let's have our few days of crying and do what we need to do. But what are we doing next? Because when, by them positioning themselves by releasing a podcast, they're getting into people's ears. And when we start to open up the economy here in Australia and collectively around the world, they've now just positioned themselves in a much better, higher authoritative mm -hmm. and credibility market space to then recoup some of those lost uh, earnings. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a great point. I mean, I do think, yeah, do you do your acknowledge it, do your grieving. Um, and obviously this has affected people in, in different ways as a whole. Totally. There's a, it runs the gamut. 
but you're right. I mean, if it's uh, at some stage, you have to pick yourself up and just say, okay, now it's time to, to get going again and to, to figure out where to go from here because um, what is your choice? What's your choice? Mm -hmm. And you're going to run out of Netflix movies. You're going to run exactly, out of Netflix eventually, series. Eventually, that's going to drive. But I also know, like, one of my clients, because of the current environment, though, um, and she ha she's still been working on growing her business, but because her mind goes so fast and she likes things, one of the things I said to her was, I said, um, do you need to get out and get a job? during the time. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Oh, what do you mean by that? Like I have a business. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's important that there's so much pressure that, Oh my, if you go and get a job, that it means you're a failure where I'm a very big believer is like, maybe you need to get a job to help with your mental health and keep you on track. Yeah. Maybe you need to get a job to fund the next launch. I don't mm -hmm. know what that looks like, but I, so for her, it's like, they were just packing shelves here. So, um, because everything closed down for her business. And so she went right. from being super busy to doing absolutely nothing. And so they still needed um, like stock shelf people here. Mm -hmm. And she, I was like, listen, I was like, yes, the government's going to give you some assistance, but your mind is what's messing with you right now because you've got so many hours in the day and it's all right to yeah. sit in that and we need to work through that. I'm not disputing that. So she went back, you know, just stocking shelves and it was the best thing for her. Yeah, she's gonna, yeah. She knows it's a short term six, eight week and then she's out, but it's really what she's needed during this time um, to, to get through the grief and to go that. So I also would just want to think that it's important to acknowledge that sometimes in your business, even if it's a side hustle and we're not in a pandemic, mm -hmm. maybe the best thing that you can do is get a part-time job, um, and fund your next project. Um, instead yeah. of trying to figure out it, you know, all those pieces yourself and you take 12 hours to do a task that would have t cost $60 to outsource. <laughs> right. So yeah. uh, it's an important, uh, thing to, I think at least acknowledge. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I, and I think sometimes it gives you other perspective, which is good too, because sometimes you just need to get out of your own head and get other perspectives. Um, mm -hmm. Listen, yes. Angela, this has been fantastic. Uh, uh, before we go, all of Angela's information is going to be in, a, in her contributor bio, but please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So, yes, yeah, so I'm a business consultant and coach, and I work with women in business really to get all the pieces in place to have five figure months and then on to six and seven figure years. And my big thing there is those without burning out in the process. And so uh, I work with women and I do work with men, uh, again, predominantly women, but do, men do come to me because they kind of like my no BS approach to things. Mm -hmm. um, and I work with them in a one to one capacity, in my mastermind, my group coaching program. And I also run Australia's leading four day, three night women in business retreat, which is still going ahead this year. So that's that's super exciting. Um, and I too have a podcast called the Business and Life Conversations podcast. And as of today, at time of recording, I've just released my 100 episodes. So super exciting. As you probably know, in the world of podcasting, you hit these that's numbers. So yeah, work. so it's an exciting yeah. day. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. And uh, feel free to, yeah, you, depending on how you consume information and what you need, you know, head to my website, AngelaHenderson.com.au. So yeah. Yeah, listen, fantastic, and uh, congratulations. Yeah, uh, because anyone who's who hasn't done podcasts, uh, believe you, hitting a hundred episodes is a is a major undertaking. Yeah, yeah. It always no, seems a little, so some yeah, no, because some people think it always sounds oh, it sounds easy. I set a podcast, but then they get like past two or three, and they're like, this is hard. <laughs> you know, but I think the average is most people who start a podcast will die out at episode seven because they do that. Yeah, because what people don't forget is like podcasting like this with you and I is quite, I like this part, yeah. but it's mm -hmm. also the prep. Like I really spend yeah. quite a bit of time understanding mm -hmm. my client before they come on and then post-production goes to my team. But if there is time that goes into it, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, well done for that. And uh, and again, listen, thank you very much for joining us today, getting up and uh, joining us. Obviously, your kids had you up anyway. But, <laughs> yes, well, no, thank you so much for having me. And I hope you have a beautiful <laughs> yeah. day over in San Diego. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah.